Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Fresh off a 10-4 season, the Iowa Hawkeyes come in at number 18 in our way too early top 25. And it was a pretty solid 2021 season for the Hawkeyes guys. A season that saw them rise as high as number 2 in the country before ending their year on a sour note, losing to Michigan in that Big Ten Championship game and then Kentucky in the Citrus Bowl. But a lot of talent returns from last year's squad. Again, a squad that won 10 games in the regular season, won the Big Ten West, and they're looking to repeat as division champions. The million-dollar question is, will the schedule allow that? So, guys, again, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert as we break down Iowa's schedule going in to 2022. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Again, those things that take you just a few seconds to do, hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, getting those notifications so you don't miss any of our videos coming up. Uh, all that stuff helps us out tremendously, helps our channel grow, and helps you out because you won't miss any of our content going forward. So please help us out. Check out everything down in the description below. Hit those buttons. Let us know what you think about Iowa and every other Top 25 team we have coming up. And ultimately, guys, become a part of our Gridiron Expert team today because I can promise you by the time the season starts, you're not going to regret it. You're going to want to be here at the Gridiron Expert because we've got some great content for you coming up, not just in the rest of the offseason, but of course once the college football season really gets underway. But today, guys, we are taking a look at the Hawkeyes as we continue to work our way through our way too early top 25. Uh, and again, last year was a fantastic year for Iowa. Again, one that ended in a, in a poor way, a blowout loss to Michigan in that Big Ten Championship game, following 42-3, to losing to Kentucky in heartbreaking fashion uh, in the Citrus Bowl. But again, this is a team that has plenty of returning talent, roughly 15 or so starters coming back, a great head coach again in Kirk Ferentz, once again returning, and one of the most difficult environments in all of college football in Kinnick Stadium. So if Iowa, uh, if you have to travel to Iowa and you have to travel to Kinnick Stadium, we're not chalking up as an immediate loss, but it's going to be a very, very difficult place to win. It is possible, but very, very difficult. Uh, but when you look at Iowa, guys, kind of their brief outlook before we dive into their schedule, uh, this is a team that really has to work on their offense. Uh, this is a team that has to improve drastically on the offensive side of the ball. They were 121st nationally in total offense, averaging just 303 total yards per game. That's not going to cut it. You're not going to win Big Ten championships. You're not going to make the college football playoff when your offense struggles as much as they do. They only average 23.4 points per game, and their quarterbacks combined for just 12 passing touchdowns to 11 interceptions. Tyler Goodson, their star running back, he was their offense. He's gone to the NFL, which means Iowa really has to work on their passing offense, has to work on the development of their quarterbacks if they want to have a chance to make the Big Ten Championship once again because we would expect the defense to be strong in 2022 like it typically is under Kirk Ferentz. It's the offense that has to get rolling. And ultimately, for me, it was the offense that was their downfall in all of their losses, three of their four losses coming by at least 17 points. So we take a look at their schedule. Uh, I would say it's really split right down the middle, guys. When you look at Iowa's schedule here, uh, those first six games, uh, not easy by any means, but certainly more favorable uh, than the back six. Uh, you know, South Dakota State right out the gate is not going to be easy. It's no cakewalk. We've seen Iowa lose uh, to a Dakota school before. Iowa losing a few years ago to North Dakota State when the Hawkeyes were actually ranked 13th in the country. Uh, so the Jackrabbits out of the FCS are no slouch. Not at all. Very very difficult early season test. Iowa State, of course, Iowa's had the Cyclones numbers for years now. Beat the Cyclones 27-17 to last year in Ames. Again, we're not here predicting any outcomes of these games, but Iowa State, with the departure of so many key starters from last year after a very disappointing 2021, I would expect the Hawkeyes to be favored in this game, especially at Kinnick Stadium. They get Nevada without Carson Strong, dealing with a new head coach and obviously having to replace their quarterback. And then they get into Big Ten play after that. At Rutgers, Michigan, and at Illinois, that rounds out those final or those first six games of the season. They get that rematch with Michigan from the Big Ten Championship. That's going to be an interesting draw there. Uh, and when you look at that, it's unfortunate for Iowa that they draw both Ohio State and Michigan out of the Big Ten East. Uh, that's a very unfortunate draw for them, but they get the Wolverines at Kinnick Stadium looking to avenge that 42-3 Big Ten title loss they suffered last year. And I would expect that game to be much closer on October 1st. Rutgers in Illinois, uh, not nearly up to the Big Ten elites yet, uh, but Rutgers making a bowl game. Yes, maybe by default, but making that bowl game 
falling to Wake Forest last year. Illinois narrowly missing out on the bowl game in year one under Brett Bielema. Both of those are trap games for Iowa with those coming on the road and both those programs starting to be on the rise, starting to really improve, uh, kind of getting out of the cellar of the Big Ten. So Iowa cannot afford to overlook either of those teams. They did not play Rutgers last year. They beat Illinois by 10 in 2021. It's those back six games, guys, that I really want to focus on for Iowa. When you look at this, it would not be a shock to see the Hawkeyes come out of their first six at 6-0, and maybe 5-1. and uh, I think anything less than that, 4-2 and or anything less, would be a disappointment if you're a Hawkeyes fan because it's, again, relatively favorable. Those back six, though, it's tough, and they come right out of that bye week with the road game at Ohio State. So uh, favorable that they get the bye week, get a whole extra week of prep for arguably one of their biggest games of the year, uh, but it's against one of the toughest teams in the country, toughest team in the Big Ten, the Big Ten favorite again, and it's on the road. Ohio State is going to be a force to be reckoned with again. Yes, they didn't even win the Big Ten last year, uh, but we know they're going to be the favorite once again, and, and I would expect them to be with the amount of offense they have coming back. Ohio State not going to be easy. Not going to be easy in Columbus. That could possibly be Iowa's first loss. This very well could be a top 10 matchup. Maybe even a preview of the Big Ten Championship game, uh, depending on how the Buckeyes fare and how Iowa fares down the stretch. For me, though, while Ohio State is going to be very tough and maybe the most difficult game on the Hawkeye schedule, it's the final four games, the entire month of November, that is going to dictate how well Iowa's season goes. The final four games will dictate whether or not Iowa wins the Big Ten West again, whether they are maybe in the thick of college football playoff discussion going into November, or whether they're going to finish, you know, 7-5, 8-4, somewhere around there. At Purdue, Wisconsin, at Minnesota, and Nebraska. Remember, they lost to Purdue last year, 24-7. That was when Iowa was the number two team in the country, and that was in Kinnick Stadium. Let's remember that. And then they get Wisconsin. They lost to the Badgers by 20 last year. So back-to-back games against two teams they lost to, half the teams they lost to last year in back-to-back weeks. Uh, So neither of those are going to be very easy. Neither of those are going to be easy. And we got Northwestern before that. Northwestern always up and down. Iowa can't afford to have a hangover after the Buckeyes. But I don't want to focus as much on that. I want to focus on the month of November. Purdue, Wisconsin, at Minnesota. The Hawkeyes beat the Golden Gophers 27-22 last year in a game that had major implications when it came to who would win the Big Ten West. And then they close out with Nebraska, a big-time rivalry game there. Nebraska has not been living up to expectations under Scott Frost, but typically plays the Hawkeyes well, only falling to Iowa 28-21 last year in the season finale. So, having said all of that, when you look at the final month of November, final month of the season for Iowa, Purdue, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, to me, all will be in the thick of the Big Ten West race by season's end. Uh, Very well could be. You can even factor in Northwestern in there if you want, but I'm not going to go as far there for the Wildcats, but I expect Wisconsin to be in there. I expect Minnesota to be in there. To me, the top three teams in the West are Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Not necessarily in that order, but those are your top three. But Purdue will make noise once again. In Nebraska, you never know. New offensive coordinator, new quarterback, and what seems like a must-win year for Scott Frost uh, and Lincoln, Nebraska could start to surprise and start contending a little bit more despite going 3-9 and nine just last year. That final month of November is huge, and whether or not Iowa repeats as division champions or they fall just short. And it will more than likely be determined, I feel like, in that two-week span of Wisconsin on the 12th and Minnesota on the 19th. Iowa losing by 20 to the Badgers last year, beating Minnesota by 5, getting to host the Badgers this year, but now having to travel to Minnesota. That final month is huge. So if Iowa comes into the month of November as a one-loss team, maybe that one loss is to Ohio State. Maybe they come in as a two-loss team, but maybe they have a non-conference loss. Maybe they lose to Iowa State. Maybe they lose uh, to Nevada or South Dakota State. I highly doubt it. It's really going to come down to who they lose to and when they lose. And that's going to determine, you know, are they in the conference title hunt? Are they in the playoff hunt? But that month of November is going to dictate everything for Kirk Ferentz and his squad. Might not be the most difficult stretch, but it is the most important stretch uh, for Iowa going into 2022. But I will say, guys, that if Iowa can fix their offensive woes, and I believe that they will, They will be a contender, both not just in the Big Ten, but on the national stage. Again, with that type of defense that we expect them to have, they rose as high as number two in the country last year before falling short. That defense plays at a very similar level, and they fix the offense. They can be elite once again. They can be playoff contenders once again. Would not expect anything less. Wouldn't be shocked if that were to happen for Kirk Ferentz 
uh, down in Iowa City. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how this plays out for Iowa, guys. And what, once again, is a wide open Big Ten West. But the Hawkeyes, as always, are going to be a favorite going into this season. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Check out everything down in the description below. Again, guys, become a part of our Gridiron Expert team by doing those things that just take you a few seconds. Takes you a few seconds, helps us out tremendously. So become a part of our team. Get nonstop college football content. Really, it's a win-win. You can't lose in this situation. And as always, guys, we thank you so much for watching us here. Thank you so much for all the support. And we will see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.